Well, hey guys, we're snug and toasty inside the garage. I got the space heater going so it's comfortable in here. We had ourselves a little bit of a snow. It doesn't, normally doesn't snow much in our area, but when we get snow, it gets interesting. So I'm happy to be off the roads and in here. Uh, finished up the battery, finished up the brakes, and yeah, I know about the smokes vlog. Uh, thanks for all the reminders. Uh, and also, we're going to talk a bit about the Freedom trailer that we use for the Asphalt Odyssey. Had a couple of requests about that. So those are the things we're going to talk about today. I was literally sitting at my desk and just started the rendering of last week's video uh, about the uh, maintenance we had done with the brakes and the battery issues and the brake issues. And I heard a knock at the door. It was the UPS guy uh, bringing my new spider battery. So I got here about uh, seven or eight days ahead of schedule. I'm pleased. Now I'm going to see if I can go ahead and uh, put it in. So bring the, the spider back to life. Okay, just been the safe side. Before I install the new battery, I want to check the voltage to make sure it's actually up to specs. So, start off with the old battery. Today it's reading 12.6. Uh, I've got the heater on the garage and it's been warming up a little bit, but still uh, quite low at 12.6. Uh, at now the new battery probably has not been on a charging device since it left the factory. It's probably been sealed up in the uh, box in the manufacturer and then shipped uh, UPS and it arrived today. So it's been, uh, it's been off a charger for a couple of weeks at least. So, what are we showing here? 12.9998. I'll take that any day of the week. Now I just got to get it back into the spider. A little tight. It's not that bad. Um, the 2013 spiders in back the battery was up under the seat. Uh, the 14's and forward, at least I think it's forward, is uh, in the inch forward storage area. Well, we got the battery in and it seems to be working great. So no complaints there. I got the old battery up on the bench. I could use it as uh, a bench battery. You never know when you need a 12 volt power supply for something. Another story. Thanks for all the comments that uh, told me about uh, uh, Sean Schmoke's blog. Uh, the Smokes blog uh, was posted about the same time I was working on the rear brakes. I had done what I thought was a pretty detailed review of the brake assembly for the rear of the can am Spider, And simultaneously while I was editing, he was releasing his video, which is detailing all the problems I ran into. I reached out to Sean and put a comment on his thread saying thank you because I ran into those same problems. Matter of fact, I took his uh, cautions, went back and re-examined my uh, reassembly process to make sure that I did not uh, encounter any of the common failure points that he mentioned in his. So my brakes are working fine. I've decided that I'll just wait till the end of the riding season, take the spider into my local shop. When I get my rear tire re uh, installed, my new rear tire, I'll go ahead and have the brake job done, uh, belt tension uh, adjusted, and just have them take a look at anything else in the rear area that needs to be addressed. Uh, you know, I'm handy with the tools. I'm pretty good at turning a wrench, but I got to leave it to the guys who are the experts, like Sean and my service center, to do some of the things that's above my skill set. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Strangely enough, one of our more popular videos last year uh, had to do with us getting the Can-Am Spider Freedom Trailer. So we had some questions on the comments about uh, the trailer. So um, And there isn't a whole lot of other videos out there. So I thought I would just review the Spider Trailer and talk about, talk about that. Now, when I originally got the trailer, the intent was to follow uh, the recommendations and actually get a kit that's uh, offered out of Quebec uh, by Pierre up at uh, uh, his shop. And you can actually stand the trailer up and set it in the corner so it doesn't take up a whole lot of floor space. Unfortunately, 2019, they redesigned the Spider, so the kit doesn't fit this trailer. I didn't know that. So I've had to buy uh, a nice cover for it, and it lives outside just in front of the garage. I don't have a solution for that yet. Our garage is too small to store it inside indefinitely uh, and give me any workspace when we come in here and, and work. And I'm, I'm a garage guy, so I need some, need some floor space. So 
uh, I'm going to take the trailer cover off, then we're going to talk about the trailer. Now, the Can-Am Freedom trailer comes in any color you want, as long as you want black. This is a nice glossy black finish, uh, and it seems to be holding up pretty good. Now, the trailer performance exceeded expectations in every way on the Asphalt Odyssey we did last spring. In the wind that we ran into on the Texas Panhandle, the gale force winds blowing sideways, the spider in the trailer never budged as if it was on rails. I was really satisfied with that. I'm watching it in the rearview mirror to make sure it doesn't stop waving back and forth or weaving. It did not. Uh, even fully loaded, I never felt that there was any weight behind uh, the, the Spider, the 1330 engine. One of the reasons we got the 2014 is because it had the 1330. I wanted the bigger engine so we could tow the trailer in the mountains. Let's take a moment to talk about some of the specifications. The empty weight on the Freedom trailer is 200 pounds. The maximum gross weight is 400 pounds. That means you've got a useful load of 200 pounds that you can uh, pack all kinds of gear into. And you've got 20 cubic feet of space in which to do it. That, combined with the 10 cubic feet of space inside the Spider itself, well, good gracious, if you need much more space than that, you're, not sim you're simply packing too much stuff. Now the hitch and adapter cable that we got for the Spider and the Spider trailer came from Can-Am Spider Accessories up in Quebec. Thank you, Pierre. He actually uh, reached out to me after we had it installed. He wanted to know how it, how it was all working. I actually thought it was another telemarketer. And I was sort of pleased that uh, his quality of service was he would actually check in to make sure that it actually was working fine. And it did. It did exactly as advertised. The only problem I ran across is the adapter cable for the 2014 Spider does not mesh properly, properly with the 2000 19 trailer. I had to buy an adapter for my dealer. No big deal. Just a few extra dollars. But it worked great. And in recent months, we've had a couple of additional questions. We want to know how we actually pack the trailer and do we have a problem with load shifting because of the slick bottom in the trailer uh, when we accelerate and stop. No, we didn't have any problem with that. And I'll show you what, why we didn't have a problem with that. In my opinion, the trailer is rather cavernous in size. Bring my toast, trusty work light. Now, I also installed a, since the interior is also black, a LED light velcroed it to the top. So at nighttime or in, if I'm in heavy shade, I can still see what's going on inside the trailer. As soon as I acquired the trailer, I knew we were probably going to have some issues with load shifting back and forth because it seems like everything that we own is nylon and nylon on nylon doesn't offer much friction so the load could ship. One of the things I did is went to uh, Walmart and picked up shelving material. I actually have a piece left over here that I now use on my workbench. It appears to be a, a neoprene type material. It's uh, perforated, it's lightweight, it cuts easy. So I actually just cut it to fit the floor of the trailer and it worked perfectly. Uh, the neoprene adds a nice gripping uh, ability to the bottom of the trailer, the trailer floor, and anything that we put in there. So nothing shifted at any time during the trip. Now, since the actual trailer is sort of a teardrop shape, it's narrower and shallower in the front than it is in the rear. Now, the first generation trailer actually had two openings, one in the rear, one in the front to make accessing your equipment you stored in the front much easier. When it's connected to the trailer, to the spider, you may find yourself leaning over to reach up front. It causes perhaps uh, a little bit of frustration trying to reach up there. So the way I pack it is pretty simple. The things I need on a regular basis, I store right about here, right where I can get my hands on it. Things I don't need as often, I store further up. For example, I still have the cover for the spider. I only need that at the end of the writing day. It would stay up front. Suitcases, cooler, uh, my bags would stay in here. Now, how much different is the uh, the depth in the front? Well, in the front, we're looking at about uh, about 13 inches of depth, and in the rear, we're looking at about uh, 21 inches of depth. 
Now the actual width, it's actually much wider in the rear. Here in the back, it's about three feet. And because of the wheel wells and the hydraulic assemblies, it's uh, closer to 26 inches in the front. So it just gets a little bit narrower. Now as far as modifications of the trailer, I really haven't done anything other than installing the LED light and a little piece of Velcro right here. I like to carry wheel chocks if we're parked, if we're parked on a slope, uh, I can actually, and we're not gonna be with the trailer, I can actually chalk the trailer so it won't uh, roll away. I've also taken the opportunity to get some decals of places we've gone with the trailer. Uh, obviously my Route 66, Durango, Colorado, Pikes Peak, and the Shenandoah National Park. Now the only other weight restriction you have is the actual tongue weight on the hitch. The manufacturer recommends it not be any more than 40 pounds. Although it doesn't specify, I think it's also pretty important that you actually have some sort of positive weight uh, on the tongue. Uh, in other words, don't get into the habit of loading the trailer to the rear where it's actually tail heavy and where it wants to where it actually want to pull the rear of the spider up. That could cause some, some braking issues and not a good thing. Now one of the other things I forgot to mention. Uh, when we encountered the ice storm up on Wolf Creek Pass, the spider was a little slippery on the ice. Uh, the two front wheels were going to go, kind of wanting to go back and forth a little bit. But I think the trailer actually helped stabilize the, uh, the ride, so it enabled us to have a, a, a less eventful trip uh, coming down off Wolf Creek Pass, even though Miriam was assured we were about to die. Well, guys, all the maintenance is done for this year. Cross our fingers, unless something else pops up. But as machines get a little age on them, things do tend to creep up. So knock on wood, hope we don't have that problem. Now just waiting for some milder weather to come our way so we can actually take the spider out and enjoy some riding. I am so looking forward to springtime. And until next time, you all take care. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. And don't forget to subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment below.